Hi everyone, today I'm just going to show you the basics of working with a jelly plate if you've never used one before. When you get your jelly plate, which is kind of a miracle material that makes for a permanent printing plate, it has two pieces of plastic, one on each side, that you'll need to keep for storage, so don't throw those away. You need a brayer, you need some stencils or some masks, maybe some soft drawing tools like these catalyst wedges, acrylic paint, I'm going to show you a few varieties today, fluid acrylics, regular acrylic paint, and you need some hand sanitizer. Now to begin with you just add a little bit of acrylic paint onto the jelly plate. Do not use inks. Um, look at their website for the list of things that won't stain your jelly plate. But I'm just using your basic acrylic paint from the craft store. And you can add as many colors as you like and then use your brayer to smooth it out over the plate. Next you want to take a stencil. Mine has letters so I actually need to put it backwards onto the plate so that the letters will be frontwards and then a piece of cardstock. I just bought some cheap stuff from Walmart. Put it on the plate and rub all around it and you'll get your first print. Now the key to jelly printing is layering. So we're actually going to get two prints. A second print is called a ghost print where I'm picking up the leftover paint. And I get just a faint version of what I just printed. Then you pull off the stencil and you can get one or two more prints from what's left from underneath the stencil. There's the first one, nice and textured. The stencils leave a lot of fun texture underneath them. To clean your plate, just squirt a little bit of hand sanitizer onto the surface and wipe it with a paper towel until all the paint comes off. Next, I'm going to try Golden Fluid Acrylics. As the name implies, they're a little bit thinner. You get a little bit more transparency than you do with acrylic paint from the craft store, so you'll just have to experiment with the different paint mediums and see what you like. I'm saving my favorite for last. But you can already see how differently this goes on to the jelly plate. It's more transparent. It actually dries a little bit faster because it's not quite as thick. And so in general you get a more translucent, lighter layer of paint onto your plate. Then I'm going to put down a stencil that I really need to scrub the paint off of. I think that's a Balzer Designs. And then my letters again, which are just from kind of the engineering supply section of Jerry's Artorama. And then I'm going to take one that I previously printed and I'm going to layer this print on top of it. This is what makes jelly prints really interesting is when you print multiple times onto lighter prints. So I'll just keep working in the same way, making some layers. I don't mind if there's a little bit of another color already on my brayer. Now I'm using a catalyst wedge. It's a soft wedge designed not to hurt the surface of the jelly plate. And I'm just going to remove a little bit of paint to get a fun pattern. And I'm adding just some hexagon die cuts just to mask out some white space on my paper. Rub it all over and pull your first print. Now you might think this is simple and boring, but look at what it looks like later after I've printed on it several times. Now you can use newsprint as well just to pick up any additional paint off your jelly plate if you don't want to clean it with hand sanitizer in between. Lighter colors like this pale pink can make for interesting images. This is just the regular acrylic paint again from the, the craft store. So you can see it's a little thicker, a little more opaque. Really pretty soothing color. 
this is another great color for layering other prints on top of. Now as I work, I keep a piece of cardstock over to the right of my jelly plate and that's how I clean my brayer in between passes. I just, I just roll it back and forth on the cardstock and sometimes these can be beautiful little pieces all by themselves that I use in art journals. Now I'm going to use some stencils. I'm going to actually use them as masks, kind of, not so much as stencils. And these are some, some little watch pieces, gears, very fun kind of bold designs. So I'll set those down and then do my first print. And you can see it's blocked out the area where the stencils are. But now I'm going to show you a little trick for getting what looks sort of like 3D images with the same color. You just pick up your stencils and when you do this just make sure you're not poking your fingernail into the jelly plate. And I'm going to take my piece of paper and you can see at the top left corner that you, it's actually a little bit see-through and I can see where that paint is so I can line it up with the edge of my first print. And I don't want it to be exact, I want it to be a little offset so don't worry about that too much. But I'm just putting the same print down and it gives this really super cool 3D effect where it prints those same images back onto my original print. That makes for a great underprint, just subtle detail. Now a little goes a long way, especially with these regular acrylic paints and on this pass with these bigger bottles sometimes I get a little bit too much paint and I regret that later on so on this one you can see the paint is all goopy because I shouldn't have put this much on there but what I do is I just roll it off on that cardstock I always keep the cardstock to the right and all my stencils to the left and I just kind of scrape off a little bit and wipe it off on that cardstock. I'm going to use the catalyst wedge again. This time this is the one that looks sort of like a postage stamp and I'm just going to create some stripes. These make for beautiful really bold backgrounds and I'm going to mask out a couple hexagons and maybe even stick a little feather in there. Feathers can give you some nice detail and nice shapes. And I'll pull the print and I just have a big stack of this inexpensive cardstock off to the left hand side of my jelly plate. You might also need a little bit of room to put your wet stencils and your wet prints until they dry. Some paints take longer than others. Now we'll take a look at the ghost print which has some cool texture on it. And there you can see the detail of the feather really nicely. Now I don't worry if there's a little bit of paint left. That can actually do some interesting things when you go to pull a future print with that paint that's hidden underneath my yellow layer. You never know what's going to happen. So now I'm going to make some stripes with the catalyst wedge the other way just for contrast. And again, I'm building an underprint basically. And you can see the paint from my other attempt. Sometimes that paint will transfer onto the wet paint and that can give you some neat effects as well. So don't worry about that. I actually don't usually stop to clean my stencils during a printing session. I think when it's messy, sometimes you have happy little accidents. Now you can always pull a stencil up while the print is still on the plate if you just didn't like that shape that was masked out. So just peel a corner, peek, pull the print off. And now I have a fun plaid background. And you can see I'm getting a little bit of paint transfer there, which is always good. And gives me some extra detail on that ghost print.
Now back to the yellow. And you can see here I have a much thinner layer of paint than I did a few prints ago. And that by itself can be fun to work with. I'm going to use my letter stencil again in this pretty pink time themed print. And pull the yellow up and look how that interacts with the pink and gives you just a bold, fun, new, pale orange color. I love it when that happens. And you never really know what it's going to look like until you've put a couple colors on top of each other. And that's really the fun of revealing your print to yourself. And that's kind of a nice one too. So now let's say you wanted to dampen down the color in this one. One fun way to mask out prints that seem too bright to you is actually just to use white or black. Sometimes the bold black of a masked out print can really show off those fun colors that you use to start with. So I'm just using some regular black acrylic. Coating my plate. Go ahead and use the same stencil. This one's nice and bold, so it'll preserve some big areas of that bright, stripey print. And then you have a fun sort of subway art looking print to work with. Now these are my favorite paints for jelly printing. These are golden open acrylics. They have the most transparent look of the three that I've used today. They, since they're open acrylics, that means they have a medium in them, which keeps them wet longer. But the transparency is what I really love. You get not only much more vivid color than you do with acrylic paint from the craft store, um, as you'll see with this next print, but you get this translucent quality that is beautiful when you go to print top layers on something that you've done multiple passes on already. So they are a little bit more expensive, but I do recommend if you really like jelly printing that you go ahead and get some of these acrylics because I just think they're a blast. I'm going to do some very subtle marks with a catalyst wedge, just a simple one, just some big rectangles. And then one of these number stencils. I tend to like these. I don't know why. They're just bold and fun. And we'll pull the first print. And you can see how vivid and gorgeous those colors are together. And then the second print. My ghost. See how the ghost turns out. And I think that's just beautiful. And you can get a third print out of these. That's the beauty of the open acrylic. Just a real faint under one to start something else beautiful on top of. So now you can see where I took these prints. I just kept working with them layer after layer, adding to what I'd done in those first steps. Never give up on a print that you've only printed on once because the more you go on, the more beautiful and richly textured and colored they are. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on the basics of gel monoprinting, and I hope you'll give it a try. Thanks for watching.